If you're interested in learning more about drip irrigation, this Debaco University video is for you. Just as we see in the picture here, let's look at drip irrigation equipment for outdoor cannabis production. So first off, understanding with drip irrigation is it can be large scale or it can be small scale. Uh, it's important to know how many plants you want to support with your system and also what the layout of those plants will be because it will factor into the way you design your system. General recommendations will be provided which will include equipment that is needed no matter the size of the operation because whether you're small scale or large scale, there's certain things with drip irrigation you need to have uh, to make the system work properly. So first off, what do you need? We need a filter. Uh, and there's high pressure filters which will filter out dirt and other foreign objects with a long usable lifespan, which is great. Having stainless steel screen and heavy reinforced frame allow for uh, reusability and maximum durability. And this is important, especially when out in a field application because they're gonna be getting uh, a lot of stresses uh, put on them. You don't wanna have your filter fail or break because it could jeopardize the very small holes that you have in your drip irrigation. Keep in mind there are different sizes and styles of filters allowing for the proper one to be selected for the intended application that you have. And there are different mesh sizes. Typically you'll find 155 or 200 mesh filters with the 200 mesh filter being the recommendation for drip irrigation applications. So others might be cheaper, might be other options. Uh, I'd recommend going with the 200 mesh if you're looking at drip irrigation. There are different flow rates to uh, uh, so ensure that the filter is not the restriction on the system. And typically you can upsize the filter, but make sure you're matching it with the size piping that you have for your system. Now with uh, looking at the system, we also have a PSI regulator, pr uh, a pressure regulator essentially, pounds per square inch regulator. For drip irrigation, 10 PSI regulator is necessary to avoid blowing out the drip lines. And if you think you can get away with it, you might get away for a little bit, but if you're going much over 10, you risk um, the chance of blowing up the lines and it basically sounds like a gunshot. So definitely don't want to be breaking your lines. 10 PSI is kind of the, the PSI recommendation. Uh, getting one that can operate under constant pressure is recommended as well. Those tend to be a little heavier duty and they may cost a little bit more initially but can be worth it in the long run. Ensure that the inlet and outlet sizes match the pipe or tubing that you intend on using. <coughs> Using. And we can see the one pictured right here, a little bit of the internals. Not that you need to be aware of all the internals, but just so you know, what is kind of going on in that filter? Or in that uh, regulator, I should say. So the mainline tubing, this is another very critical area, and we see that right here, very large in this case. Uh, it can be black, it can be white, doesn't really matter. Uh, but what is important is the diameter, uh, because that will be based on the needed flow rate that can be supplied by the system. Check the exact tubing you will use, because many main lines either are not rated for use under constant pressure, so it must be installed after automated timers or valves and all tubing is normally sized, meaning there's no industry standard really. Refer to the inside diameter or the outside diameter, the ID or the OD measurements for the exact tubing size. Now what we notice here with this large oversize is this is allowing a very large field to be supported potentially by limiting the number of valves uh, that are needed or the number of zones that are needed to be allocated. With drip irrigation, there are important fittings to be aware of. So drip ir ir irrigation does need proper fittings to allow for proper connections and delivery of water. Key fittings apart from effective system include what's called the tape lock barb fitting, as you can see here, where this gets punched into the main line and then the drip tubing will attach here. Uh, we can have it here with a valve or we can just have it free flowing. Uh, the drip tape end plug, uh, particularly important with thicker mill ratings of drip tape, and it can be a foldable type or kind of a, a plug that goes in at the end. On um, thinner types, some growers may tie it in a knot, but this is a little more professional looking and offers a very consistent um, and really eliminates water loss. Uh, there's again the grip sleeve end here, uh, different versions. Most growers now are going with this type here. And then there's the tape lock coupler, which is basically what happens or what you need to have on hand when you hit the drip irrigation with a sharp tool or break one of the lines there. Basically, you cut, this, you cut the area there, splice this in, and your drip irrigation will flow as normal. There's also a valve option if that's fitting for your operation. Now the drip tape itself is uh, how the water is actually delivered. And thinking of the, you can think of it as precisely leaky hose 
even though it's a little bit more complicated than that. It does allow for a controlled amount of water to be delivered based on calculations. There's another video here on Debaku University to go over that. The benefits of drip tape, the reason why it's so popular, is it's very efficient at watering, allows for uniform water delivery, the material is durable and can last for many years, if you get the thicker um, 15 mil, for example, um, and it can resist clogging, in particular if you're using a filter ahead of the uh, irrigation. It can be used above or below ground as well, so it offers some different installation methods. Now, I say precisely leaky hose, it's a little bit more complicated than just taking a pinhole and poking holes in a hose. There is some uh, inter- kind of turbulence that occurs that does help it allow it to run for very long distances. Now when we're looking at installing our drip tape and we're kind of uh, installing it to the main line, we want to have a punch or uh, to be able to allow those fittings, those barb fittings to go into that main line. There's many options, options that can accomplish essentially the same task. However, pictured here, um, Right here is what's called the miracle punch, and it's highly recommended because it allows for minimum fatigue and consistent results if you're making five holes or if you're making 5,000 holes. I've used this myself, and I really think it is the way to go. Uh, save it, it lasts for many years, and does make the process much easier. Then there's hold down stakes. And while technically these may not be needed, if you're there's a long run of drip tape that's not under a plastic cover or another method of support, using hold down stakes is advised. Because if you get a high wind, especially early in the season, all your drip tapes that were originally nicely spaced out go through and start to overlap and they start to twine and inter intermix with one another, which just causes a whole mess. Look for features such as galvanized fittings, um, these um, hold down stakes, I should say, that are six inches long and U shaped. The U-shaped are wind stakes, and they're stronger than just a traditional like a candy cane J-hook, uh, as they hold down especially well in heavier soils. They're typically offered in packs of 10 or 100, and you can always get a couple more um, there and put them all in a line to make them easier to recover at the end of the season. Additional items that you may need, uh, or you could use, I guess I should say, would be timers. And they are optional, we see a bunch listed here, uh, but they're highly recommended, especially for larger operations to offer consistency of the plants. Uh, because this can allow growers to be make better decisions about making irrigation adjustments. There are also many of these may be able to hooked up to rain sensors, so plants aren't getting overly irrigated with water. The basics had a setup here. The systems can differ, yours may differ, but the basics are still the same. It can come down to the source a grower uses and what they want the end result to be. You simply have that initial water, you have a timer potentially, you can have a backflow preventer, you want to have a filter or pressure reducer as well, fertilizer injector is optional but recommended again, and then this connection to the header which is the main line there. So this is kind of just that basic kind of simplified system. Don't be kind of hesitant to adopt a drip irrigation system because there's new fittings, there's different uh, components that are needed. Hopefully this breaks it down, doesn't make it quite as intimidating and allows you to adopt this method for your own uh, irrigation setup because your plants will like it and you will like it once you get it all set up because it's a very efficient method and offers great consistency for you and the plants.